Hello, I'm Clay County Attorney Travis Johnson. One thing's become very clear to me since I started this campaign, and that's the necessity of explaining to you, the general public, what it is a county attorney exactly does. Iowa Code Section 331.756 outlines roughly 85 different duties and obligations for a county attorney. And instead of boring everybody by going down that list, I instead thought I'd stick with the five primary functions of a county attorney's office. Number one, criminal prosecution. Not sure if you're aware of this or not, but any crime that happens within Clay County limits is a crime that comes across my desk for prosecution. Whether that's a speeding ticket or a first degree homicide or anything in between, it's my obligation and my duty to prosecute those cases. Those cases may start with a phone call at three in the morning from law enforcement, dealing with a chaotic situation, wondering which way to go with an investigation. My office is in charge of helping that, that investigation yield good results and good evidence that makes for a prosecutable case. Now, when the case comes to uh, being prosecuted, I focus on the victim cases in my office. So I, I handle all the domestic abuse cases and all the sexual abuse cases. And in that vein, one of the things that I do that I think separates how my office handles those types of cases from many of the other county attorney's offices is uh, we try to meet with, we do meet with every single victim of domestic violence or sexual abuse. Uh, the only time that meeting doesn't happen is if uh, the, the victim in that case, for whatever reason, just doesn't want to come in. Otherwise, we make every effort to make that happen. Something I've done as county attorney is create a full-time victim witness coordinator. Uh, the person in that position is Jesse Hafner. She's done a great job. One of the first things that'll happen after a, a charge of domestic abuse or sex abuse is filed is we set up an in-face meeting with uh, the victim. Jesse and I will sit down with every victim and there's lots of good reasons to do that. First and foremost, I wanna make sure that every victim in our jurisdiction understands they have a voice in the process, that their voice matters, and that their voice will be taken into account by me and my office uh, in coming to a resolution of that case. Uh, another reason that that's important to meet with them. Uh, it gives me some valuable insight into what's going on uh, behind the scenes in that particular case. So take a domestic abuse case, for example. I want to know what their history is. Uh, oftentimes it's not the, the first abuse that's happened that resulted in law enforcement being contacted. I want to know how prevalent the abuse was, what type of abuse, and uh, more importantly, more to the point, I want to know uh, what that defendant's dealing with. Does he have mental health issues? Does he have substance abuse issues? Because um, that will help me in fashioning an appropriate end result or resolution to that case. Another thing that I do uh, in, in resolving cases is I, I do reach out to law enforcement, any law enforcement that's involved in a particular case that I have, if there's anything funny that goes along with it. If, uh, if I give a recommendation that's out of the norm, whether it's a more harsh recommendation than I normally give in that type of scenario, or uh, maybe a, a less harsh, uh, or maybe even a modification of the charge, that's something that I make it a point to reach out to law enforcement about. And it, that's made me a much better attorney and it's made my relationship with law enforcement uh, a lot stronger. And I, I think it's one of the reasons that they're so strongly behind me in this race. And the reason I say it makes me a stronger and better attorney is, uh, say I drop a charge down or I'm offering something less than what I normally do, I've, I know that I have it in myself. It's an obligation on myself to call law enforcement and explain that. So I know I gotta stand behind that decision and I gotta be able to explain it. I do the same when it comes to victims. If I resolve a case in a way that I know that they're not happy with, I will make that phone call to them and explain to them why, why I deviated from, from something they wanted to see happen. Another reason that helps with law enforcement too is if, if I have to drop a charge down or, or be more lenient than I usually am, there's gonna be a reason for it. And to the extent that that's something to do with the investigation that was done or a new law that passed or new case law that came down, I get the opportunity to explain that to law enforcement uh, and it makes both of us better the next time that type of case rolls around. All right, number two, the second thing that my office will deal with, mental health uh, committals and substance abuse committals. Uh, not sure if you're aware of that process or not, but if you have a loved one, family member, friend, coworker, et cetera, uh, someone that's suffering from mental health or, or substance abuse to the point that, that they're an absolute danger to themselves and or others, uh, there's paperwork that can be filed in the state of Iowa uh, to get them committed, get them seen by a professional where, where they will do an evaluation uh, by a professional 
and uh, that evaluation will, will say what kind of treatment, if any, is necessary. My office handles those cases on behalf of the state. We make sure that uh, those people follow through on any of those recommendations, that they, they do so in a, an orderly fashion. And uh, ultimately, we will close the case when the professionals tell us that it's time. The third thing that we deal with, uh, DHS, Department of Human Services. So throughout the, a lot of the criminal cases that we deal with, there are times that law enforcement will come into contact uh, with children that they believe uh, were in an unsa unsafe or are in an unsafe situation. They will then call DHS who will come in, interview the family, interview the, the children, look at the evidence that law enforcement collected, and make a determination, is this a child that is in need of some kind of assistance on behalf of the state? Uh, and if it is, they'll contact my office and we'll file something called a China action or a child in need of assistance action. Basically, it, it, it gets the court behind uh, DHS, gives the power of a court order into that home uh, to kind of force them to get the help that's needed, whether that's mental health evaluations, whether that's substance abuse treatment, parenting classes, Maybe it's an environmental concern. My office will represent DHS through those, those cases. Sometimes those cases can last one, two, three years even. Uh, the fourth thing that my office will deal with is uh, civil work. And when I say civil work, I'm not, not meaning that we just handle civil cases for, for anybody within our jurisdiction. That's absolutely not what I mean. You need a civil attorney for that. Uh, what I mean by that is civil work on behalf of the county. So to the extent that the county is a party to some litigation, my office will help represent the county in that. And in that respect, I have uh, a part-time civil attorney, Barry Sackett, that handles all of the civil work on behalf of the county. One of his main duties as, as our civil attorney in, in county is to sit through all the Board of Supervisor meetings and give them any legal advice on some of the many things that the Board of Supervisors does. Uh, he'll also handle any employment issues as it relates to uh, any county employees in any county litigation that has to take place, he'll take care of that as well. Uh, fifth, and the last thing that I'll, I'll talk to you about today is debt collection. And when I bring up debt collection, it's probably important that I explain what I mean and what I don't mean by debt collection. What I don't mean is the collection of any debt, okay? It's not every, every person that's in debt in Clay County, say a credit card company wants their money. That's not what we do. Uh, say you have a civil judgment against you, again, that's not what we're doing. Our debt collection program is purely collecting debt as it relates to criminal cases. So if you have criminal fines, that's the debt that I'm talking about that we collect. Another full-time position that I created after I started here and the Board of Supervisors was behind me was for a full-time uh, debt collection uh, person within our office. We hired Amy Mosher about a year ago. Uh, she's been a fabulous addition to the office. and. Uh, the reason I felt I felt it was important, and I, I believe one of the many reasons that the Board of Supervisors agreed uh, to make that a full-time position and to create a position for that, uh, was the fact that the debt collection program, when it brings money in, and when, when Amy brings that money in, the Clay County gets 28% of all those proceeds. Okay, 28% of all the money that my office brings in through that debt collection program goes straight to the people of Clay County to be used here in Clay County. And uh, within the last year, that's in excess of $74,000 that Amy's brought in. Uh, that's just the money that goes to Clay County. Uh, and over the last 10 years, we've given three quarters of a million dollars back just to the people of Clay County through that debt collection program. All right, well, those are the five things that my office does. I'm proud of the work that we've done over the last four years since I've been there. And I look forward to having your vote in November. If you have any questions or concerns about any of the stuff I talked about here today, feel free to reach out to me and, and we can have a conversation. All right, take care.